warning. The warning on this video has been removed, and if you struggle with the sight of seeing lots of spiders, or have arachnophobia, possibly this video is not for you. Spider Tank 3 is ready for blast off. Let's do it. Okay, Spider Tank 3 is a very different Spider Tank versus the previous ones I've done on YouTube. A lot of this is going to be shot under time-lapse photography and I'll also be morphing the speeds as well. And what we're looking at at the moment are three redback spider egg sacs and one black house spider egg sac waiting to hatch. In a sense, it's incredibly boring to look at. You may think there's not much going on here, but if I start to compress time a bit and we take a closer look at those egg sacs, you can actually see there are things moving inside the egg sac. It looks extremely creepy to look at. The redback spider egg sacs change size as they develop and they also change color. They tend to get darker as they mature. So that's part of the beauty of time-lapse photography. Things that you normally can't see in real time start to be revealed once you start compressing time. These redback spider egg sacs were taken away from the mother spider at a very early stage of their development. I have noticed some people saying that the spider egg sacs can't develop unless they're still with the mum spider. I think as we watch what goes on here, we'll smash that idea apart, and I'm pretty sure that all these spider egg sacs are going to be successful and hatch lots of redback spiderlings. The redback spider egg sacs which are in here belong to a pet redback spider I have in the yard called Barbie. It's egg sac 6, 7 and 8, with egg sac 6 being laid up sometime in August. The actual lay date is a mystery, but I know the date that it hatched and it was the 15th of October. And I can only assume that, let's say, it was 7 to 8 weeks for that egg sac to hatch. I don't know the exact timing on that. But once those very cute redback spiderlings start to come out of the egg sac, the spider tank will change from that day on. This spider tank is different to the previous spider tanks because I will not be introducing any food into the spider tank. There is water in there. But the only food for these spiderlings is their brothers and sisters. So it's a bit like the red back spider Hunger Games. We'll probably have a couple of dominant female red back spiders after a period of time. But this beginning phase, the spiderlings have come out of the egg sac and they're actually behaving themselves. They're not trying to pounce on each other to get a quick feed. Redback spiders can go for quite a period of time without needing a feed. In a redback spider nest, when an egg sac hatches, what would normally happen is the redback spiderlings would hang around for a little bit, but when there's a bit of a breeze or a windy day, they would drift away from the nest on a very thin piece of web and they would start to find another place to live as an individual spider. The problem with hanging around at home is Big Mama's going to come and have you for breakfast, lunch or dinner. That's the way these spiders work. Maybe a smart move would be to hang around nearby Mum's nest, but don't get too close to Mummy. But these spiderlings don't have Mummy around. In fact, all they have is each other. If the black house spider egg sac does develop and hatch, well then maybe they've got another problem going on. But sooner or later, the desire to need a feed is going to overtake the desire to be friendly to little brother or sister. In Spider Tank 3, the most psychopathic killer spider is the one that's going to survive. I've learned a few things about these spiderlings over the years. I do know they are attracted to light or things that are brighter because when they hatch from their nest, you want to get away from mum because she's a psychopath. And normally redback spider nests are in dark recluse areas and light would be a signal to the spiderlings that's an escape route. I'll head that way and wait for a breeze to come and send me on my way. There's a couple of complications happening already. There are a few small critters getting about inside the spider tank. Somehow they got in there and we're going to slow up the footage and we're going to go in close and see what's going on. It looks like a spiderling takes out one of the small, whatever it is, it could be a fly or something. But there's also another spiderling there who seems to be caught on their own web. There's something weird going on. The spiderling isn't free from a zone. 
that could be a very fatal thing to do considering who's around you. And I think that's a big reminder that sometimes it's that one mistake that you make that can be the fate of you. These spidlings will eventually take advantage of anything that's not prepared to run, and if they can catch something, they will. But this is very early days at the moment. They seem to be fairly settled in real time when you look at the spiderlings and you're not teasing the web. They're actually a very passive spider. They just sit there and seemingly do nothing. If you tickle the web, they will get very active. They seem to get quite agitated when the web gets tickled. And when I've had the boroscope in there, looking at the spiders up close, I do tickle the web to make them move around. But normally, these spiderlings are just sitting on the web that they've made and chilling out. But don't ever get too comfortable because that chilling out is sort of like the calm before the storm. And here's a bit of footage of the other bug that's in the tank. It's like a little fly. I'm not sure what the other thing was. It was minuscule. I mean, the spiderlings themselves are tiny. I should have put a grain of rice in there to give you some sort of scale of what you're looking at. But that fly, or whatever it is, is playing a very dangerous game. And I'll tell you what, one thing I do see is those spiderlings are very wary whenever something touches the web. They come out of their egg sac and they are prepared to jump on anything that excites them. They seem to be acting as a group of spiders and doing the same thing, but then all of a sudden you'll see an agitator. You'll see one spider decide, I'm going to do something different. And it's only about two days after they came out of the egg sac, individual spiders start to do their own thing. It must be a very courageous move to move away from the pack and they will start to weave more web, they start to go into new areas, and they start to take more risks. Although, in this environment, there's no real safety in numbers, because the numbers around you is what's going to kill you. Maybe the penalty in being adventurous is you are moving around, you are spinning more web. You're going to need a feed before another spider in the tank. But you never know, being that individual spider who's decided to take a risk could be a winning formula in this environment. But then there's another divide going on here which really does separate the spiderlings. Which ones are male and which ones are female? And I can tell you something straight away, there is no way I'd want to be a male amongst any other females in here. And on the thought of the gender divide going on with the spiderlings, and luckily, I have a friend who lent to me this wonderful boroscope. It's called the AU Pro 90. My friend, and I've known him for a long time, sells this on eBay as a kit to look up inside, I'll just say, ballistic barrels, without saying a G word. And when he first suggested to me... This boroscope, I'll be honest here, when I think of boroscope, I think of looking down spark plug holes or looking down in engine bays looking for nuts and bolts that you've dropped, I never ever thought of something like this to look at spiders or stuff in nature. In fact, across all of the spider tank videos that I've done and all the redback roundups, I don't think I've ever heard one person say on YouTube, hey, did you try a boroscope to see those sneaky spiders where they hang out? When I started playing with this tool, I felt very quickly this is heading me in a new direction in a way to see these spiders in a really nice way. So with these tiny spiderlings, I took a lot of video footage with this boroscope. It's got its own LED lights. It's got this fantastic screen so you can see exactly what you're shooting. And when I looked at these spiders, I thought to myself, I don't think I can tell a male from a female. Remember, I'm not an entomologist or a spider expert. But one thing that I did notice was there seemed to be ones that were prettier or had different markings versus others. And I'm hoping that you can see this. I want to show a lot of footage from the boroscope. They all had the same spidery sort of attitude. I wouldn't say there were some that were lackluster versus others. And I did learn that if I agitated the web, I could get them to be quite excited they'd almost get into like cranky mode but they weren't doing back leg action and they weren't trying to jump on each other one thing that was happening and this didn't surprise me was the spiderlings saw the light from the boroscope i didn't have many other lights on when i was doing this and of course i already know that the spiderlings are attracted to light so 
the spidlings wouldn't run away from the boroscope view. They'd actually come towards the camera and they try to spin web and they were constantly coming up to the very tiny boroscope lens that's on this device. It's actually tiny and it's designed to go up, like I said, ballistic things, okay, without saying certain words. So it was very curious to see the way the spidlings reacted to the boroscope. In fact, some of them got so excited they worked out, oh, here's an escape route. I can go up the boroscope and get out of the spider tank, but I had to keep brushing a few down to stop them from escaping. But thinking back to gender, and often with the male redback spider, it's smaller than the female, but these are spidlings and they're all tiny. I was looking for what I say are little pom-poms at the front of the spider that the males have that the females don't have. Honestly, I couldn't see it. I looked very carefully. Maybe you see something that I don't see, but I can't divide male from female from what I'm looking at. So, okay, I'll come to a conclusion here. I can't say this is week one because this really encompassed about three days. So I'm going to call it part one. And I think maybe with Spider Tank 3, I'll call it part one, two, three, four, whatever. Okay, not weeks because I think there's going to be times when things are very dynamic and there's going to be times when literally nothing happens. And another note about Spider Tank 3, and this is different to the previous Spider Tanks, there is no Vaseline around the top of the glass, and also that top cover has no silicon spray, so in a sense, it's totally chemical free. So yeah, there you go, there's part one of Spider Tank 3, the ultimate Spider Hunger Games.